So you wanna know how to be a successful leader inside of business? Well, I'm about to let you in on the secret. In this video, I'm talking about the three elements that you must embody to have this success as a leader in your business. This is how I operate with my team. This is what I have taught my clients. First, we're discussing what you're currently doing that's getting in the way from your leadership with your team. Second, we're gonna talk about how you can motivate your team so they can be more productive than they've ever been before. And lastly, we're gonna talk about, and this one's a little different, how you can use your anger in a way that maybe you never have previously. Let's jump in. The first is you've got to learn how to listen. This might seem so counterintuitive to what a CEO, what a boss, what a founder and leader must be. But if you're not listening to your team, they are closed off, they're not open. They're gonna to continue to pester you with their perspective and what they think needs to be done because they're not feeling heard. So if you really wanna lead your team, you're gonna get really good at listening. What does that look like? It means asking curiosity-based questions, open-ended questions, right? You're trying to extract their point of view. Again, this might seem a little counter to what a CEO needs to do but you've got to learn how to listen to your team. So what does this look like? I have this incredible client, Phil. He came to me, he and his business partner could not align for over two years. They were trying to come to an agreement and they just kept butting heads. And as two men who appreciate and value one another, it was really difficult for them to navigate this. And so for two years, they were not getting enough sleep. They were continually stressed. And one of them told me it's always at the back of my mind nagging me, the fact that we cannot agree on this thing. And as I was diving into the situation, I was asking Phil, tell me how the conversation goes. And very quickly I could see, he was trying to convince his partner of his perspective. I said, hold on a second. No, stop doing that. He was like, what do you mean? I said, you got to listen to him. What do you mean? If, I'm, if I listen to him, isn't that validating his point of view? I said, no, not at all. You've gotta listen and reflect it back to him so he feels seen and heard. That's how you then now can see everyone's perspective and you're gonna be able to align. But right now, you're, you're not even listening to him and he doesn't feel heard and he's continually pushing back on you. So you've got to listen, you've gotta reflect. And you'll say words like, what I'm hearing you say is. It sounds like what, from your perspective, X needs to happen, right? You're trying to see from their point of view. Again, your mind's gonna say, but wait a minute, this is validating what he's saying we need to do. And you might not necessarily think that's the best thing to do. And that might be true, but you cannot start to repair and problem solve and align until everybody feels heard, until everyone's ideas get out on the table. So listen to your team, reflect what they're saying back to them. What I'm hearing you say is clear. Good. How did this play out for my client, Phil? Like I said, for two years, they couldn't align. After I taught him this, after three conversations, they were able to not only align verbally, but they had a signed deal. And the other beautiful thing is his partner is now doing the very things that Phil was nagging him about for two years that he wouldn't go do on his own, right? He was pushing back. Because the partner now felt heard, validated, valued, seen, he was now proactively going and doing the very things that the CEO had previously been trying to get him to do. So this listening tool is a very powerful tool. Use it. The second, if you wanna be a successful leader, you have to empower your team. What does this look like? Oftentimes, because you're the CEO, maybe the founder, and you built this business from scratch, to get to where you are, you ended up doing a lot of the things, right? You were carrying a lot of many hats, and you have kind of, in a sense, become a bottleneck inside of the business, right? Because you're doing all of the things. And then we hire people, and then we do their job for them, because that's just what got us here, right? And a powerful leader is going to empower their team to be successful. Right? So that might mean for a time, you're going to have to stand al alongside your team members, give them very clear steps and protocols to follow, and then check in with them. It doesn't mean we just hand them a responsibility and then we just go disappear and then come back and get mad that they didn't do it right. You've gotta stay close at first. This might sound a little silly, but how do you teach a three, four, five-year-old to swim? You're not gonna throw them in the water and then just walk away and be disappointed that they drown afterwards, right? You're going to be there alongside them and you're going to help them and support them so 
that they can learn this skill of swimming. And the same is true with you and all of the skills that you have developed as the leader inside of your company. Because you have started from ground zero, because you have this wealth of experience that they don't have, they don't understand some of the things that you do. So you need to be close by and you need to show them how to do these things, but in a way where you are keeping the responsibility within them. And this is the empowering piece, right? So when they have questions, that means you actually need to push it back on them and say, what do you think we should do in this situation? What do you think our response needs to be? How do you think we should handle this? So you can be there close by, you can coach them and help them to discover the answer. This is how you can really help them to own it and to feel empowered in this role and responsibility. If you operate th this way with your team, very quickly, you're gonna have more time on your hands. You'll be able to be more present with your family on the weekends. You'll even be able to take weeks off over Christmas break. I've seen this with clients. So how can you empower your team to be successful in their roles? Okay, we're about to hop into crazy tip number three. And before we do, take a minute to like and subscribe. I hope you're getting tremendous value. That is why I'm here and I wanna invite you to subscribe so you can continue to see and not miss any video. Tip number three, you've got to utilize your anger. What in the world am I talking about? Listen, somebody like you did not get to your position without having tremendous passion and drive. And with that, can come extreme frustration. Sometimes your team is doing things and somebody does something that is way out of line, right? And I've seen this with incredible CEOs like yourself where they're so frustrated, but they also want to be kind and nice that they stuff down the anger and all kinds of weird, funky things start to happen. Your team actually needs to see that anger. When somebody gets out of line, they need to see that. I have an incredible CEO, Devin. His business is amazing. We have 4 x his business in 12 months. And recently a team member came onto the leadership team and made some decisions and said some things in a meeting that were extremely inappropriate. And Devin was naturally very frustrated, didn't know what to do, didn't want to harm this individual's feelings. But at the same time, I said, look, you cannot brush this aside. You can't even dance around it. You've got to address it very directly. And you know what? She needs to see that anger and passion. So bring that to the conversation. It's not the kind of pointing the finger, blaming kind of anger. It's more the righteous indignation, just like Jesus shows us in the Bible. Show that anger, show that passion, show that drive so they can have clarity on where they need to go and feel empowered in their responsibility. Another reason I want you to bring your anger is because what you're doing matters. There are people out there who need your help, who need your team and you to be aligned, who need you to be hyper effective so you can help them and to accomplish their hopes and dreams inside of their business, right? So I really feel like doubling down and knowing how and when to utilize your anger will help you and your team align and ultimately to grow. That anger is rooted in a belief that what you do matters and the team needs to see that. Now you might be asking yourself, Katie, this was awesome. What else do you have for me? Well, I've got an incredible guidebook and guess what? It's totally free. You don't even have to pay for it. Just click the link below. It will take you to the guidebook right now. What am I teaching you inside of this guidebook? I'm gonna show you how to be the one. The CEO at your business at the helm who is powerfully leading your team. I'm gonna show you how to be the one who can negotiate the deal with the bigger clients than you've ever had before. I'm gonna show you how to be the one on big stages. I'm gonna show you how to be the one to achieve and accomplish not just your dreams inside of your business, but your life. How do I know about this? I just happen to live in Puerto Rico with my husband and my four kids homeschooling, living my dream. How did I get here? It's by building a successful business. I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's not what you think. Click the link below. Go download the guidebook. Get started right now. I'm Katie Richardson, and I'll see you in the next video.